Capsule 2. Developing Oral Communication Skills Through the Formative Workshop. Contrary to popular belief, it is possible to learn to communicate orally and to improve that skill. It is neither a natural ability nor a gift. As with a sport, it is the practice and analysis of strengths and weaknesses that allows one to improve and progress. Students therefore need to learn to use different components of oral communication, such as eye contact, intonation, and posture to develop the skill. How can all these different components be taught? The didactic model of the six-step formative workshop developed by Professor Christian Dumais provides the tools to effectively teach each component. What is a formative workshop? It is a teaching and learning situation in six steps that can vary from a few minutes to several periods of the school timetable, depending on the content taught and the pace of the students. Only one component is taught per workshop. The didactic model of the formative workshop is based on a deductive process, which places the teacher in the center of the learning situation. Indeed, the latter ensures the teaching while giving students the opportunity to intervene and ensures that students apply the newly gained knowledge in a realistic context. Here are the six steps of the formative workshop model along with descriptions of each step. Step one, the trigger element. At the beginning, it is important to present the oral component to be worked on using a trigger element without naming the component. This can be, for example, by presenting an audio or video recording in which the component to be worked on is heard or seen, or through a modeling of the component by either the students or the teacher. The presentation will first highlight a misuse of the component as a counterexample in order to provoke a reaction from students and spark an interest. After, a proper example must be presented. Step 2. Observation and Prior Knowledge In this step, students are asked about the weaknesses and strengths of the trigger element, that is, what was observed in the counterexample and example. Students should also be encouraged to identify which oral communication component is being targeted while asking them to expand on what they know about it. This makes it possible to know the student's previous knowledge and to take stock of the representations of the component. If it has been possible to film the trigger element, it may be desirable to view it. Step 3. Teaching. Proper use of the oral component is then taught based on the student's representations. The component is therefore thoroughly analyzed so that students can understand it and become aware of its use in various contexts. The teacher models the component and takes the time to provide a comprehensive definition with the student's help. To guide his teaching, the teacher, with the help of the students, can answer the following questions. What, how, why, and when. They answer the question what in order to define the component. How is used to understand the practical application of the component. Why is to pinpoint the reasons behind the learning of the component, its usefulness, importance, and relevance. Lastly, the question when shows those times when it is possible to use and apply this component oral communication. The answers to these questions can then be written in the student's words in a document called a repository that can either be displayed in class or kept by the students. Step 4. Practical Application To favor learning, students should practice using the component in realistic situations. They may reinvest their learning and understanding in small groups or in a whole class discussion. Please note that not all students need to participate in the activity. Students learn in different ways, by doing, imitating, and observing. The number of exercises or opportunities to practice will depend on students' needs. The complexity of the component is also a factor. The more complex a component is, the more it will need to be put into practice. Step 5. Large Group Feedback A large group feedback is made at the end of each one of the practical exercises in Step 4. This includes a summary of the teaching points to ensure understanding. A small group of students or a team redo of the exercise in front of the class to make sure that everyone has understood the usage and purpose of the component of oral communication that was studied. Step 6. Metacognitive Activity 
Finally, in order to allow students to consolidate their learning, one or more metacognitive activities are proposed. For example, the students might be asked to answer questions in a logbook. The teacher can also create a concept map with the students that summarizes the teaching points. This allows students to reflect on their learning and keep written records of it. The formative workshop can be used to teach every component of oral communication, whether it be reformulation, language registers, articulation, or posture. However, it must adapt to the pace, needs, and abilities of students. It is important to remember that only one oral object should be taught at a time when the formative workshop model is used to ensure its effectiveness. Capsule 2, Developing Oral Communication Skills Through the Formative Workshop by Christian Dumais, full professor at the Université du Québec at Trois-Rivières, 